Alléluia. Alléluia. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Alléluia. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Alléluia. Uh, today we have uh, our teaching on the traditionals. Okay, traditionalism. Uh, I believe uh, we need uh, to just uh, touch on this one so that uh, we understand where it stands when it comes to the word of the Lord. Uh, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you that uh, you guide us, that you lead us, that you help us uh, throughout uh, this time, that you give us uh, your understanding and your strength. Uh, teach us your ways. Show us your ways. Speak unto us, for we are, Lord God, opening up, so that your name be exalted, so that your word be planted in us, that your truth and only your truth remains in our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So I, I wanted to touch on this uh, topic so that uh, we see from the word of the Lord where we stand when it comes to traditionalism. Um, anybody know what traditionalism is? What do you think that is? What does it mean? What what you saying? Okay, religious. Okay, and who else? Yes. A way of doing that was passed down from generation to generation. Okay. Hallelujah. So now I I want us to touch on this subject because. Uh, in our families, in our culture, in our lives, in our countries, in our traditions, in our everything, sometimes we are taught and told certain things. Uh, whether it comes from Africa, whether it comes from China, whether it comes from America, there is always something that is being taught or that is being uh, said and told. So I want us today to touch on this subject to see where the Word of God stands on traditionalism. First and foremost, traditionalism is not bad, Okay. Because tradition, as uh, she said, it is uh, something that is passed down from generation to generation. But there is a tradition that is according to the word, and there is a tradition that is according to men. Hallelujah. That's where the difference comes in. So when it comes to traditions, the tradition according men, we already understand, they cannot give life, they cannot remain so as i was discussing with one of the brother he asked me this question he says but i believe in the lord i love the lord jesus but i also go in the villages to pour out the uh how they call it eh? yeah libation uh you know all those different things where you pour out the the, the drink on the floor or on the ground because of the ancestors so he was asking those questions, and I said, we ought to actually give a teaching concerning this uh, thing, because in the mind of many people, tradition can become a normal way of doing, a normal way of being. Uh, oftentimes, they will say, well, it doesn't really matter, because after all, if you are Christ, uh, I mean a Christian, you can also keep your traditions. So for the sake of our study, we needed to see what actually the Word of God tells us concerning traditions. Amen? Uh, it is important that we always go by the Word of God. Um, you know, in Nigeria, for instance, a woman cannot uh, give something to a man or to another person with the left hand. It is, it is like a horrible. You never do that. In America, they don't care. You see what I'm saying? They just give you with the left hand. You take it or you leave it. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, in, um, in, in, um, in places like uh, 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 Arabi Saudi or Pakistan, you cannot uh, walk in the bathroom without your shoe. If you walk in the bathroom without your shoe, you're going to have problem. But in America, people can walk in the bathroom without their shoe. They have no problem. You see what I'm saying? In places like... Uh, 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 the, the, we call it the Amish people. The Amish people is a type of a people who came from Europe, and they, 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 in their lives, you know, women cannot dress in a certain way. They have to dress in another way. They cannot uh, wear. Uh, uh, they cannot uh, use even a, a, a jewel, jewel, jewelry. Okay, so you have many traditions that are passed down from man to man, from uh, people to people, from generation to generation. And sometimes those traditions come from the word of God and they are down the road twisted, okay, in order to 
become something else. Now, I want us to see from the word of the Lord Jesus if traditions that come from the word of God and down the road that is rearranged, if it is wrong, if it is good, so we're going to see it from the word of God. Amen? So for this sake, let's take the book of Mark. And we're going to read from uh, verse uh, chapter 7. We're going to start from verse Let's let even start all the way from verse 1. Hallelujah. So the book of Mark, we're going to start from chapter 7. We're going to start on chapter 7. We're going to start from verse 1. Go ahead, please. Mark chapter 7, starting from verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread, with defiled, that is to say, with on on that is to, to say, with unwashing hand, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Now, uh, just before we continue, washing your hand has nothing wrong with that, but when you wash your hand as a sign. Of dedication to God instead of saying that if you don't wash your hand, then uh, whatever you put in your mouth will be defiling your body. That's when the tradition becomes a problem. You see what I'm saying? Because what the disciples were doing is that they went, they saw food, they took it, they put it in their mouth. And the traditions of the Pharisee, they said, before you touch the food, you have to wash your hands so that you don't defile your body. You see what I'm saying? So it became now a spiritual matter. Sometimes in our tradition, people will say that uh, your great mother has died. She's not happy about you. Because you haven't gone to see her. How do they know she's not happy? <laughs> you haven't cleared the grass where the, 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 the grave right is. You haven't gone to see where the graveyard of your mother is. And she's not happy. So, so forth are so many of those things that are being taught and passed down. Now, the, as I say, the issue is not the tradition itself, because in the ways of the Lord, he is also a tradition that we have received by receiving the word of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the word. Verse 4. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And, and many other things there be which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and of tables. Verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath I, I say, Isaiah, 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 Isaiah mm -hmm. prophesied of you hypocrites. Well, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. Now, the question they ask is, why is your disciple, so those who believe in you, why don't they walk in the tradition of the elders? Now, this question is important because this question addresses all the questions in the world. Hallelujah. If you go in any place, um, you can uh, sometimes, if uh, there is a dead body uh, and they have to bury the dead body, they will uh, take the dead body, they will take uh, the, the coffin and then they will walk around with the coffin and then... And, uh, or if, if, there's always something. Uh, and then when you arrive, they tell you, no, this is the way that uh, your great, 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 great father have done. You, you must do it. So the tradition here is that the Pharisee found fault that the disciple did not walk according to the tradition passed down by the elders. Now, the same thing also happened in our families, in our cultures. Hallelujah. For instance, in the United States, the tradition is that if you are about 16, 18 years old, you have to get out of the house. 
you have to find your job. In America, I say in America, that's the way they do. In Africa, the guy is a 53 years old. He's still in the <laughs> in the mother's house. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? In uh, in uh, in America, uh, the tradition is that uh, uh, you don't speak, you don't speak a child. You communicate with the child. Uh, in Africa. You spank the child, you don't communicate with the child. <laughs> but now, as I said, we have contrary things, but how do we find ourselves being Christians? What should we do? Because you have to remember, the issue with tradition is not tradition itself. It's whether that tradition becomes a burden against what you believe in the Lord. So we're going to see how the Lord explain this. Continue, please. Verse 7. Verse 7. Uh -huh. How, how bathed in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Right here. Stand a little bit. Now put this in the context. The Lord Jesus does not say that people do not worship him. He said people worship him, but the worship that they give unto him is not according to the truth of the word, is according to the traditions of men. And he goes further by saying that, that even if you worship, and then you say, Jesus, I worship you, which is not Jesus, I curse or I blame or I blaspheme you, you still worship him, right? But he says that worship becomes vain if it is taught by the, by the commandments of men. He says, I'll be vain. It is, he says, I'll be in vain. Do they worship me? Teaching the doctrines, okay? To teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. So traditions can become doctrines. And that doctrines can become a way of teaching people in the church to follow Christ. And that become a way of making the people falling away from the love of Christ. Now, let, let me say that again. He says, I'll beat in uh, give me give me that in amplify. Verse 7, Mark chapter 7, starting from verse 7, amplified. Mm -hmm. They worship me in vain. Their worship is meaningless and worthless. Hallelujah. Pretense. Amen. So they are not worshiping idols. They are their worship is addressed to the Lord Jesus. Is addressed to God. But yet that worship is not honorable because the basis of that worship is tradition of man. Go ahead, continue. Read again. Mm -hmm. They worship me in vain. Their worship is meaningless and worthless. A pretense. Teaching the precept of men as doctrine giving their traditions equal weight with the scriptures. Hallelujah. Amen. You will see that uh, when the question is asked, well, you cannot do this, you cannot do that because your father, your great father, your great great mother, your great 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 whatever has done so, you must do so. You will see when the Lord Jesus speak and then address it, he will not say that the does say Moses we shall do so, that's how we're going to do. Hallelujah. Because Moses, for Jesus, in the sense of her birth, in the sense of her human uh, uh, genealogy, Moses is a whole tradition. He's a whole father. So Jesus should have done as Moses should have done. Uh, even I'm saying, I'm talking about tradition when they accuse you of why you're not doing it because this has been done this way for a long time in the family, in the church, or in the whatever. But is that tradition based on the pure, true word of God? Remember, he says here that they do worship him, but the worship that they give is meaningless, is worthless. It is not received because the basis of it is on the traditions of men. And some of the traditions were a mix of that specific word of God and something else. The Bible calls it mixed worship. Let me give you an example. Some churches, for instance, they have the statues that they put to worship. And they put the statue over here, the statue over there, 
And they say, no, they don't worship the statues, but they actually use the statue in order to remind them uh, God. <laughs> and then they say, that is because that uh, in the time Moses was spoken to by the Lord uh, to build an ark of the covenant. And when he built the ark of the covenant, he also built and made from heaven things of like uh, uh, the cherubims. And, I, and they say, well, you see, the word of the Lord says we should not represent anything in earth, on the earth, in the heaven. But yet God told to Moses to represent the cherubim that was in heaven. And I say, well. This is one thing that you have to remember. When the Lord told to Moses to represent something that was in heaven, he gave him the exact picture of it. That's one thing. Did you give him the picture of what you want to represent? No. And then it was not a rule. It was an exception to the rule. An exception to the rule is not a rule. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord did not discard his commandments simply because he has given. For this reason, he comes and he says in the book of John chapter 4 that the hour has come where the Father is looking for true worshiper. So the reason why these people were worshiping in vain is because although they were doing it, it was not in a true worship. It was just a concoction of different traditions from men mixed up with the word. But the Lord Jesus speaks unto it and says, this calls a worship to be in vain. So in another word, when you are Christian and you are still practicing the tradition of the villages, contrary to the word of God, what you do is that you cause your Christianity to be in vain. We will go to that. Let's continue. Verse 8. Verse 8. You disregard and neglect the commandment of God and cling faithfully to the tradition of men. Hallelujah. Amen. You disregard and neglect the commandments of God and cling faithfully to the tradition of men. I will take a tradition here in the United States, for instance. In the United States, many people on Sunday, they like to go to watch football. That's a tradition for them. And that type of tradition is that Sunday for them is the day of their entertainment. Entertain, meaning enter to be tamed and tainted. So they will let you believe that on Sunday they can do as they want because it's the day of rest. Okay. But the issue is that the word of God tells us what you ought to do with your day of rest. But they say, well, I am a Christian. I do not need to go to church because I am a church by myself. Well, the issue is that you yourself by yourself cannot make the church. You are body and part of it. It's when we come together that we form the church of Christ. Hallelujah. You yourself by yourself, you cannot, because put it this way. If by yourself you were the church of Christ, then here's the thing. It says where are two or three. By yourself you are not two. Hallelujah. So those traditions will uh, come and then they will have any type of excuse why they should be doing this instead of that. And oftentimes they will give those reasons. But the Lord Jesus says, you disregard and neglect the word of God. But you cling, you faithfully follow the tradition of men. Yesterday I was watching a movie with my wife and a Christian movie and Inside, they said two things that really touched me. A man said, to see which things is your idol or which thing is your God, take one week. And then for one week, don't watch TV, don't go to work, don't cook, don't be on your phone, don't be on your computer. For one week. And another week, don't read the Bible, don't go to church, don't pray. And he said, if you are honest to yourself, you will find that uh, the first week is the one that, miss, that, that you miss the more than, than, than the second week. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? 
So he was sharing this, and I say, and he was sharing this because in that movie he was saying to the other one, he says, people will go to the movie theater, and that we have no problem watching all kind of uh, people naked, undressed in the movie. And they say it's just a movie, it's just entertainment. It's not entertainment. It is wickedness. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, because he told to the people, he says, you are a Christian, you go on Saturday to the movie to watch somebody naked. And the person will curse out the name of Jesus and then you laugh. And when you come on Sunday and then the preacher speak, if the preacher curse out the name of Jesus, you will say, alas, why you do that? But it's the same Jesus that you have been laughing of in the theater. Hallelujah. Or let's take about the pool or the, 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 the beach. People don't have a problem going to the beach. The beach is a beach a problem. No, it's not a problem. A beach is water. Water made it by Lord. It was made by the Lord. Hallelujah. But I was saying, I said, if you go undress your body in a beach for one million people to see you, then you must be full of demon. Like literally. Because you present your holy body to the masses. But if somebody in your neighborhood come and want to undress you, you will cry alas. You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like there is some people who do what they call striptease. So they go in the clubs and they make themselves naked. And they ask to the people who come to play with them to respect their body. I'm like, <laughs> it's contrary. But you see, that's how tradition of men is. It makes you do one and the contrary at the same time. But you see, for traditions, women or men will dress in a way that is improper. Hallelujah. But because it is tradition, and it is accepted. But the Lord Jesus says this. He says, you disregard and neglect. So if you don't disregard and you neglect, you fall in the same thing. Hallelujah. Neglecting is what? Is you know what the word of God says, but you give excuse why you should not be doing it because it's not a big deal. We call it neglect. Hallelujah. And by neglecting the word of God, the Lord Jesus says that you are causing your worship to become in vain. In villages, they will say, okay, you cannot have your shoe flipped over. That if your shoe is flipped upside down, you can give birth to cat. And I'm thinking. <laughs> or they say that uh, you cannot spank your child with, how uh, brandy de ballet? A stick of uh, uh, the African broom because the African broom is a lot of stick, like a very thin stick that they put together to make the broom. So that one thing they say, if you take and you spend your child with that, it will become kaima. It will become alligator. And I'm thinking. See what I'm saying? So are traditions of men, are they wrong? Yes. They are so wrong that the Lord Jesus says that he can cause you to worship wrong. Let's continue. You will see what the Lord Jesus says again. Continue verse 9. Verse 9. He was also saying to them, you are expert at setting aside and nullifying the commandment of God in order to keep your man-made tradition and regulation. Hallelujah. Amen. You are expert at setting aside 
and nullifying the commandment of God in order to keep your man-made reaction, uh, tradition and regulations. This is what it means. If a person believes at the same time the word of God and believes at the same time the tradition of man, the word of God says that the tradition of man will overlap your heart. And the belief of the word of God will become nullified in your heart. So, having the tradition of man in your mind that you ought to do, and then having the word of God in your mind, you ought to do. The Bible says that the one nullifies the other. Unfortunately, by believing the tradition of man, you cause the word of God to be nullified. That's powerful. Hallelujah. Continue. Verse 10. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother with respect and gratitude. And he who speaks evil of his father or mother must be put to death. But you Pharisees and scribes say, if a man tells his father or mother, whatever I have that will help you is Corban, that is to say already a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother, since helping them will violate his vow of Corban. Okay, so what it means is that somebody gets up and says, ah, the Lord, the word says, I need to honor my father and my mother. But the Pharisees say, hey, if the money you need to give to them, you have already consecrated and vowed that you're going to give to the church or you're going to give to a man of God or you're going to give to God, God himself will understand that you can skip your father. So the Lord Jesus says, for you to receive those type of offering and the honor, you are even ready to nullify the word of God just so that you will defraud the person in order to receive the gift. Are you what I'm saying? And some people do so. Instead of honoring their own father and mother, they say, no, I want to honor God. You cannot honor God if you don't honor your father and mother. Hallelujah. So it tells them that you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother since helping them will violate his vow of carbon. Carbon, which is a gift that is a mint for God. Verse 13. Now pay attention to this one. So you nullify the... So by doing those things, you do what? You nullify. What is nullify? To cancel. To cancel. To reject. To bring to naught. You nullify what? The authority of the word of God. You nullify the authority of the word of God. Acting as if it did not apply because of your tradition. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have a case of traditional attitude and actions. And you have the word of God. And the word of God says that if you want to keep the tradition beside the word of God. You make the word of God of non effect. If you keep more your tradition, you nullify the authority of the word of God. And by doing so, continue. As if it, it did not apply because of your tradition, which you have handed down mm -hmm. through the elders, mm -hmm. and you do many things such as that. Hallelujah. Amen. So here is the same thing as in all villages, in all countries. In all religions, is that they past traditions. But you see, the tradition that is passed down, if it is not kept within the word of God, as the word of God saith, then that tradition becomes a stumbling block for your walk with God. In Ivory Coast, for instance, the tradition with, the, with the, some churches is that when somebody is dead, you go, you pay 2,000 friends CFA to ask for a prayer for his soul. When somebody is dead, they go to pay for a mass at the, at the Catholic church. They pay a mass and they say, they call it la messe de Riquiem. So they pay 2,000 francs CFA which is roughly about $5, 
and they pay it to the church so that the church will name the name of the dead in the prayer of the mass so that he will be accepted before the Lord. Now, put it this way. The guy was on earth. He spent his time being an adulteress. He spent his time being a fornicator. He spent his time being a liar. But he made sure that his friend has kept 2,000 friends here for him. <laughs> he said, my brother, I'm going to pay you every month 10,000 friends CFA so that you will keep the 2,000 friends CFA for my death. And after I'm dead, go to the mass, ask to the priest that he had to read my name in the mass so that the God can receive me. And in those type of tradition, the traditionally says, oh, may his soul rest in peace. The guy is in hell. He's screaming over there. It's not your main soul rest in peace that we make him rest in peace. Are you what I'm saying? Because it's not the main his soul rest in peace that make his soul rest in peace. And that's a tradition. Because the person thinks that uh, he has really com com is compati uh, 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 compassionate. That he has true compassion by saying, oh, may he so rest in peace. He's not resting in peace. For the word of God says that it is given to men to die how many times? And after what comes? So the guy is standing in the judgment seat of the Lord. Before the judgment seat of the Lord. And the Lord says, good servant, go, praise the Lord. Or bad servant, go where? So once he has went to hell because he has been a bad servant on earth. And then you say, may you so rest in peace. What are you doing? Stupidity. Blasphemy. Because the word of God that tells you that you must speak as the word speak. But because of the way tradition do, you also do it just to show compassion, which is a bad way. Bad traditions. In a tradition that says, you know, you have to speak the truth in love. And for them to speak the truth in love, it means don't say anything. In the tradition of man, they say, ah, you cannot judge your brother. Let me put this uh, at rest. In the word of God, he talks about two things. Judge not and judge with righteousness. Hallelujah. In the word of God, he does not say never ever judge. He says, judge not. Because the thing that you judge, you do yourself. Hallelujah. So you cannot be a judge because you are not judging in righteousness. So he says, before you remove the plank that is in your brother's eye, remove what? The beam that is in your own eyes so you may see to remove and help your brother. It tells to Timothy, he says, rebuke, reprove, hallelujah, correct in righteousness. How do you rebuke if the action of the person you haven't judged it? Does it make sense? But how you judge, you don't judge based on your preferences. Like, no, I don't like it, I don't like it. If you don't like it, nobody like it, nobody on some food. <laughs> but if the word of God says so, then because of the word of God, you have a basis of righteousness to address the issue. In the word of God, it tells, for instance, that if you have a matter against an elder, bring the matter in a disciplined way, bring some other people and address the matter before the elder. But in the tradition of the church is, this is your elder. You cannot say something. 
You know what I'm saying? So you see, the pastor or the prophet or the apostle or the minister is a drug addict. Hallelujah. But because in the church tradition, they just don't talk about it, then they want you also not to talk about it. Otherwise, you will violate the principle of the church. Tradition goes a long way. From the villages to the schools. From the schools to the buildings. From the buildings to the government. From the government to the churches. From the churches to the businesses. From the businesses to the families. From the families to everywhere. And now you have a stain of Satan completely covering almost the entire world. But the law says, by doing so, you nullify the authority of the word of God. I told you people, and I want to say it again. When you make a decision to make of the word of God your authority over your life, that's when you prosper in the Lord. I read again. When you make the decision to make of the word of God the authority over your life, what it means? It means sola scriptura. Meaning that only the word of God has authority. And the supreme authority. If the word of God tells you, don't do this. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. But your work tells you lie cheat and steal, what you do? But you know, if you cheat and lie and steal, you will have your job and your paycheck. But if you don't, they're going to fire you. So what you do? You realize that the law says, give me verse 10. Verse 10. No, no, let, let's go all the way to verse 8, sorry. Verse 8, not verse 10. Verse 8, uh -huh. you, you disregard, hallelujah, and neglect, hallelujah, amen. It's like disregarding and neglecting the word of God is at all time in your life as being a child of God. It's not only when you are praying, fasting, or reading the word. Is at all time. I, I used to tell this one. I say, when you drive, you know willfully that they put a sign and they say, don't pass over 70. And you go 95. And then when you see somebody is pulled over over there, suddenly, <laughs> Jesus. You my savior. Vroom. <laughs> Let's address this one. Because many in the church do, do that. Put your hand up if you do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me explain to you something. You know what deceit is? Deception. Covering something up. You see, it has become a habit to the point that you don't even find sin inside. You just do it and you continue. Hallelujah. And after you tell to somebody else, why you lie like this? But what you just did. <laughs> Pay attention. Because in the general tradition, of the road is just go fast to get where you want to go. But if you are a child of God, if you drive, you know that, okay, you can go up to this. And if you go over this, you will not be pulled over. You're fine. But if you know you go over this, you will be pulled over. 
Now, sometimes it can be you forgot. But sometimes you know, you remember. How you, how, how you know you know is because as you were going, you may have forgotten. But when you saw the cup, you remember. Then now you know. But after you pass the cup, what do you do? <laughs> Hallelujah. And sometimes you they have what they call on the cover cup. The car looks like a, your car. So you're thinking it's just a neighbor of the road. <laughs> and then you're driving and you're speeding, but there is also somebody ahead of you speeding. And you see the other car on your side. You're thinking it's just a normal car. So you're trying to cut, zig. By the time you put your zig, you see the guy flashing the light, and you're like, hey, Jesus, thank you. No, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> because you were conceiving deceit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then the guy there in front of you got caught up. And you say, hey, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> no, Jesus, thank you. You should repent. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, some people that are in jail, not because they are more sinner than you. It's because they got caught up. You see what I'm saying? Many, if they get you caught in your sin, you will also have the same. That's why it is honorable to keep the word of God at all times. It can be easy to forget it. It can be easy to neglect it. When throughout the day, you know, there was a man. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm trying to. <laughs> you know, he's not there. Anyway, so there is, there is a man. The day he goes to share the word of God, that day he knows the Bible. And he look in the Bible like Google. And when he found what he's going to share, the verse prior where he wanted to share, he don't even read it. He only read the verse that he's going to share. And then he goes, he shared the word of God. But that word that he just selected out to share to others, how does it apply to his life? None. The, call, the word of God called it deceit, deception. For what you teach others, you don't do it yourself. He called it the Pharisee. You see the Pharisee? He says, do what I say. Don't do what I do. And the word of God did say, by, by doing so, you nullify the authority of the word of God and it becomes in your life like a tradition. You neglect, you disregard. You disregard and neglect the commandment of God and cling faithfully to the tradition of man. Traditionalist, remember, is not bad. But when it does not remain sticked, Bound to the pure word of the Lord, you have made it out of it an idol. Now you have to identify in your life what has become tradition that is causing the word of God of being null and non-effect. See, When somebody, let's say somebody is sick. And then you go to pray for the person. 
You pray for the person, but you yourself in your mind, as you pray, you don't believe. What you do right here is a sin. Because the word of God says that anything that you do without faith is sin. But because the tradition of the church is prayer, oh, be healed, mm, be healed, mm, be healed. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why we out to make sure that we keep the tradition of God, which is the word of God, always true in our lives at all times. When you neglect the word of God, he touches your daily life. When you neglect the word of God, it touches your daily actions, your daily character, your daily behavior. When you neglect the word of God, it touches all that you're involved with. Some people disregard the word of God and some people neglect the word of God. Both of them, the Bible said, they make the word of God null and non-effect. Again, the word of God is sola scriptura, meaning the authority by excellence. Some people will argue by saying, but no, you cannot have only the word of God as authority. That it ought to be some tradition and the word of God, just like in the Catholic church, for instance. In the Catholic church, they have the word of God and the tradition of the church. And in the tradition of the church, they have, for instance, the prayer of Mary. They have uh, the prayer to the saints. They have the prayer for the dead. That's the tradition of the church. That is not the word of God. But they say because uh, it was been and it has been done for a long time, then therefore uh, it is acceptable in the church. And I'm thinking, like, it's not because it's long for, done for a long time. Because you see, Cain killed Abel. For a long time. It's not because he killed Abel for a long time, then a, a killing is acceptable before the Lord. That's what I'm saying. And if, when you go further, they say no, because those people who were not able to have the word of God, in those days, what will be the basis of which there will be that judge if we have to keep good the word of, uh, you know, only the word of God? And I said, but in the time when Cain killed, what was he judged? Hallelujah. You may not have the visual word of God to read, but God himself is not unjust. He placed his word inside of you. He wrote his word. It's knowledge of what you ought to do and what you're not out to do. He wrote it inside of you the day he built you. That's how that knowledge of him make people seek God, but they don't know which God they have to find. And then those who see God without knowing which God they have to find, they make idols. And they call it God because inside of them, there is the knowledge of the deity of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that uh, Enoch walked with God and was no more. For God took him. He didn't have any Bible. But he followed God. Noah in his time, all people were wicked. But he pleased God. He didn't have the Bible, but he followed the righteousness of God. How much more those who have the word of God? Because those who do not have the word of God were able to find the ways of God. How much more those who do today have the word of God and the Holy Ghost? That's why the Lord Jesus says that it will be a tough judgment for those of these days and this time who have the word and the spirit than those of Sidon, those of Sidon and Tyre. And, uh, Ty, Hallelujah. It says Sodom and Gomorrah will be judged easier than those of today, of this generation who has the word of God and the spirit and yet neglect the word of God.
Hallelujah. I want to close with the two verses we're going to read. Take the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 